Okay, so what we're going to do here, as the title says, is we're going to process M45, the player Ds, the Seven Sisters, whichever one you want to call it. The data was collected using a 200 PDS Skywatcher telescope, Newtonian, a QHY168C astro camera, and an Optolon L Pro noise pollution filter. And this is the image that we got straight out of DSS. So first job will be to just give this a bit of a crop. I can see some artifacts around the outside here. Pretty simple to do, just load up dynamic crop. Just drag this around here like this. See the handle changes when you put your mouse over it. Just uh, crop it to there, I think that'll do fine. And the next job we do is dynamic background extraction. So we can shut this dynamic crop box down. Uh, we're running DBE because you can see a bit of a little bit of gradient around the image here. It's slightly darker here than it is here. Uh, I've got this set up as a preset. And what this will do is you can see I've got it set to just use sections around the outside and the settings we're using is deport sample radius of 103 tolerance of 1.1 this will all change on your images and correction will be subtraction discard background model and replace target image so we just hit the tick box on that and that will run dbe on this image and there we go so we shut down dbe Unstretch, restretch, and that's where we are now. See, it's kind of flattened out the background, got rid of all that odd colour around the outside. Next up is um, a bit of noise reduction. There isn't actually a lot of noise in this image, to be honest. Let's just zoom all the way in, find a piece of sky. See the um, well, there is noise there, but it's not that bad. But what we'll do now is we'll run. Um, multi-scale linear transform on the image using these settings. Now the important thing with this is that you first produce a mask and built into MLT is um, a mask which you can run. So tick that linear mask, tick on preview mask. Um, we need to unstretch the image and bring up the real-time preview. So his mask, remember that um, what black's protecting, white's allowing. So we just need to make this a little bit more aggressive because I want to try and protect the nebulosity around the stars. And you use that by increasing the amplitude like this. So we'll try it at 150, 160. See how it looks with that setting. Give it a few seconds for the real-time preview to catch up. Uh, we need a little bit more, so let's put this to 210. I need to see some more darkness on the nebulosity if possible. And probably just up to about 230. When you've been using PI for a while, you get used to kind of how much to change things by. It's, it's Sometimes it's tiny steps just to, you know, get the protection you need on these masks. So there we go, there's the, the mask that we've created. So to use the mask with multi-scale linear transform, you just basically shut down the real-time preview box here, untick preview mask, and then that then allows all these settings here to become available. And we just click the square on there to apply these settings to that image. So that's the settings applied, shut down multi-scale linear transform box and we'll just put a restretch on just to see uh, how it looks now with that bit of noise reduction done. You can see it's starting to look even smoother. Pretty good, huh? So the next job is to turn this image from a linear image to a non-linear image. You can tell it's non-linear because of the green bar down the side of the uh, the name tag here. It's just pretty simple to do. 
take off the temporary stretch that you've put on load up histogram transformation hit that checkbox so we know we're looking at just the M45 image if you've got more than one image loaded and hit the real-time preview button just there and then start playing about with these sliders there's three sliders there's a black point slider the white point slider and the mid-tone slider so pull this mid-tone slider across to the left like this All right, and you'll see that stuff is starting to come out of the image I'm just moving across here we're using my mouse wheel so keep dragging that left or that middle slider across here we go so you can go all the way like that make it look hideous but obviously not recommended to do that so what you've got to do is find um, a reasonable spot to apply this stretch to. Remember we're also going to just drop the black point down a little bit. Uh, if you look here in the shadows it tells you how many pixels you're clipping. Now the what I would call the beginner error that some people do, well I did it when I first started, is you try and you're studying the objects on the screen and you forget about your black. Um, space isn't totally black and what you can do is this and you end up totally clipping out your blacks and you think look at it, well oh, that's okay and we'll process that but if you look at the actual display on PixInsight you can see you're actually clipping 276% of your blacks so you don't do that so keep that black point around about here so you're hardly clipping any of the black pixels just pop on a bit more of a stretch there so you've got to as I'm sliding this, you can see the nebulosity appearing. And you want to get it to the point where the nebulosity appears, but the background doesn't get any brighter. Which I think is probably about there. And you just hit the square box there to apply that stretch to the, the image. And it goes totally white, so click that reset button there. Shut down your real time preview. Shut down histogram transformation. And there is the image turned from a linear to a non linear image. So, the next job that we do is rerun TGVD noise, which is run using these settings CIE, LAB, a uh, thousand iterations. Now, I'm not going to run this on the video because it takes a long, long time. So, what I've done is I've run it and then I've got another image already prepared to, to put it here. So this is the image after the TGV denoise, which I shut that down. Uh, you can't see it on the on the video, but there is a little bit less noise now in this image. There wasn't a lot to start with, but it's removed a bit more, which is great. So we can shut this one down here. I'm not gonna save it for the purposes of the video. And now we continue to work on the file that I've called after TGV. But to the TGV denoise does make uh, quite a lot of difference to the background of, of this particular image anyway. So what we'll do now is we'll bring out some colour in the image. Um, it's obvious looking at this image that these areas are blue. We'll have some star colour come out as well when we do this. Uh, maybe adjust the background a tiny bit. Don't know yet. Let's wait and see. Now, when you work on images, you always should be using a mask because you'll be working on specific parts of the image and you don't really want to affect the parts you don't want to affect. So, in this particular case, we just click that button there to extract the lightness and we'll construct a mask from that. So, there's a black and white image of our original image. Now, this isn't for me any good as a mask we need to make things blacker and make things whiter and what you do with to create this mask is load up your histogram transformation make sure you're looking at uh, the L image the luminance image or the lightness image 
put on your real-time preview and just proceed to destroy the image like this doing exactly the opposite of what we did to stretch it the first stretch we did now we want to break the image somewhat by making the areas that we want to work on brighter whiter and the other areas blacker in other words the background if you go too far you start clipping out what we want to work on it's these areas here so that's pretty much okay there just a little bit more yeah there we go there's the mask ready so click the square button that will apply this stretch to our L image just here shut down histogram transformation and then to apply the image drag that tab to that point on our original image minimize that image click there click on show mask and then you can see what's at the moment being protected the background is being protected because it's totally red the stars and everything else in there is not being so much protected because it's it's not red stars aren't red are they so unshow the mask load up curves transformation click on that s button click the tick real-time preview and in the center part of the this this line grab hold of that with your mouse and click and drag upwards like that and you'll see that color has now come into these uh, stars the bluish color is now starting to come out and also star color in the other stars as well click the square leave the real-time preview on because now you'll see what would happen if you repeated this operation once this is finished right so this has now been applied to the image just here and you can see that if we were to run it again it would look like this now this might be a bit too strong um, so might like to run it again but this time I'm going to drop the amount down a little bit I like that just there. We've brought out a little bit of star colour in the other stars as well. And quick click the square box and that will now apply that stretch to on top of our previous stretch that we just did. And we'll leave the real time preview there. Just reset that. Click on the L button just there. Let's see what we can do. Oh, and um, invert the mask. Now we're looking at the background just drop this down a little bit just see if we can make a slight bit of difference to the background try and make this into a kind of a small s Yep, there we go click the square button again and then we're done with the curves transformation part and there's the image so far so what we'll do now is I'd like to put a bit more color into the actual stars but don't want to affect the other stars the bigger stars the blueness so first thing to do is we'll remove the mask that we've just used and we'll create a star mask using these settings so 20.2 noise threshold 6 scale 323 everything else at default you drag the triangle over the image or hit the square button and that creates a star mask now for brevity I've already created one just here it takes a little while so save doing it through the video this is the star mask that I'm going to use and as with all masks we drag that over there to apply the star mask to the image leave curves transformation there because we're going to be using that 
show the mask and you can see all the little white areas here is what is now going to be affected by what we're going to do next so unshow the mask put on the real-time preview of curves transformation again this s button at the end here and drag the line straight up and you'll see that the stars apart from these bigger ones has now started to get some color of their own hit the square box to apply that stretch to the image right there's the stretch applied and if we wanted to apply it again we get a little bit more color out of that now do we want to apply it again yeah let's throw it on again so now we'll re rerun that same stretch on the image and that's as far as I want to take that, I think. So shut down Curve Transformation. Remove the mask. And there is our image so far. So the last job I'm going to do on the image is to put on some screen annotations. Um, this is done with a script, image analysis, image solver, and put an M45 there, search for the image, Pleiades, okay, focal distance, I'm just going to drop this to 500, just for the purposes of this, and when we click OK, what we should find is that the image will now be solved and data will be added actually into the image file which tells you know tells us what's there so what we do after that's solved we run another script under render which is annotate image and what this does you click ok on this and it will uh, annotate the image hopefully Just need to check, don't need that, let's annotate the image. I could put name styles, messier objects and NGC objects. Now the great thing about this is when you're looking at your images you won't see them but there may well be other galaxies hidden in here. There isn't on this particular image but this will actually find them, especially the PGC's galaxies which can be very very tiny and you'd be amazed what you find. Anyway, click OK on that and that should uh, now produce another image which will be annotated. And there we go. This is uh, annotations showing what is what in that image. The star names, uh, the names of the nebulas, everything about it. So that's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed watching me process this. If you want to see more uh, we update the YouTube uh, channel here quite regularly. And if you hit the subscribe button and the alert bell, you'll be alerted when we upload a new video. Feel free to comment, like, dislike, whatever you like. And uh, thanks for watching.